Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today we'll be playing through the beginning of episode 5 of Life is Strange 2. Episode 4 ended so bleak and I'm just hoping for a little bit of happiness for these boys who deserve it so much. I want to give them the world. I just mother hen over these two little boys this entire playthrough. I can't help myself. Anyways, please take a moment to like the video before we begin if you're so inclined as I give a huge shout out to our patron of the day, Silent First Class. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. Your contribution helps so much, including things like upgrading cameras that decide to have dead pixels all of a sudden or, you know, decide to make my green screen look bad for some strange reason. And anything like that, any upgrade that SRG has ever gone through is all thanks to patrons like you. So I really appreciate it so, so much. You have no idea. And now, let's get on to the gameplay video. Enjoy! Once upon a time, in a wild, wild world, there were two wolf brothers living in their home lair with their papa wolf. They lived in peace until hunters took their dad away. The Wolf Brothers wandered for days and nights, learning how to live on their own for the first time. That's when the Big Brother discovered that the Little One was not an ordinary wolf, but a super wolf. They decided to head south to the distant land of their ancestors. But the journey was long and dangerous. Still, the Wolf Brothers made new friends on the way. They learned more about the world. But I am wondering why one of them was more like an otter them. than a dog. After a bad accident, am I alone in that? They were separated. The big brother had been hurt, and the hunters finally captured him. They put him in a cage. But when he finally escaped, he went to search for his little brother. He soon found out that the little wolf had joined a coyote cult and he would not leave them. Suddenly, their mother showed up after all that time. She said she came to help rescue him. They begged the coyote leader, but she would not release the little wolf. He was their idol. So they had to knock her out to escape. That's the wolf such an brothers, epic shot. Now reunited, followed their rogue mother far into the desert to her hideaway. Interesting. So we're going to Arizona, looks like. Okay. Because that's where Karen said she lived. Life is Strange 2 is a story based game that highlights player choice. Your actions and decisions will have consequences and impact the world around you and your brother. Choose wisely. <laughs> I just want to make good choices. Arizona. Seven weeks after the events at Haven Point, so almost two months. But not quite. Seven. Perfect number. Can't stop seeing sevens today. Did you know scorpions glow in the dark? Well, not in the dark. They glow under UV light. So if you're trying to do some scorpion hunting to clear your area, why does it look like they're sleeping in the desert? Sean? Mm. Dude, come on. What? What time is it? Get up. It's so beautiful. Check it out. Why are they just sleeping in the desert, in the wilderness?
<laughs> so? Yeah, okay. Good call. Wow. That's amazing. I know. Is your eye okay? Yeah. It just itches. It's okay, Nano. I... Promise. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Daniel still feels really guilty about hurting him. No matter what happens. You hear me? Yeah. I love you too. Brothers, always. Oh, I needed that after episode four. So, are you still having those bad dreams? You know, about Lisbeth? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like she's around, coming after me. It's scary. Dude, I bet she's having nightmares about you. Yeah, but she's still out there. Somewhere. Creeps me out. Listen, we're far away from her, okay? We're together again. Safe. Hope so. Sean, are we criminals now? Yes. I, I've, I've decided to just be honest with the kid. If he's gonna be all, I'm an adult now, then... Sort of. We did a lot of... illegal shit. If the cops catch us, we'll be judged for what we did. That's for sure. Yeah. I know. Well, we're almost at the border. Finally. I like it here, but we'll have to leave soon. I know. I'm sorry, Anna. Sean, I know it's been a long time. Can you tell me the rest of the wolf story? Oh, yeah, I can tell you. <gasps> Been forever since we left off. Way too long. Hmm, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So, thanks to their mama wolf, the wolf brothers barely escaped from the coyote cult. She let the crit lair deep in the red desert. The Wolf Brothers rested for a while, but at some point, they'd have to continue their journey south. They were closer than ever to their father's land, but between them and their destination lied... A mighty fire unicorn. <laughs> but she's nice, so they become friends. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me. <laughs> Who's telling Who's the telling story? story? You are. <laughs> but it's my story too, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay then, so what happens next? Uh, they, they arrive in Mexico, but the country is rampaged by goblins. Together, the wolves and the unicorn manage to slay them and become heroes. The police forgives them and all their friends come to Mexico to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Sounds pretty good, and I know. 
Let's pack this shit up and head back to town. Gotta so, clean up our stuff before we I leave. I guess they just like decided to and go camping. This place camping. is too pretty. Okay. So incredible to see all those stars and planets up close. <laughs> it's like we're right there. <laughs> Every star looked the same. Until we used Karen's old guide. That's how I feel. I feel like every star looks the same. I'm like, Orion's belt, got it. The rest of them? Okay, where did we leave off? Wow. Wow. Quite far back. We've got a lot to read, it looks like. Wow. Okay. All right. Wow. We've got a lot to read. Karen wants to talk. It's hard, but I'm trying to hear her out. Not sure I'll ever understand what she's been through or what she's after, but I can try. We got Daniel. Finally. The freak guru can go to hell now. Feels so good to be with my bro again. Leaving Haven Point, Karen is taking us to her place. We need to breathe, sleep, heal. Blah, 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 blah. Sarah Lee, this needs to go. What? Blah, 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 blah. Sarah Lee, this needs to go. What needs to go? Nightmares? Is this, this looks like Daniel sleeping. Is this like a nightmare hand? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Karen lives in a desert commune, no shit. Unincorporated community, she said. <laughs> it's called Away. Only 30 people live here on and off. This place is so weird, but the desert is mind blowing. The perfect hideaway. Draw on some cactus, away like the Hollywood sign. Let's see, a tiny dog, a little, little chihuahua, maybe a, a desert serval, I don't know, a lizard. And the two boys, okay. Daniel's still feeling so confused, guilt tripping a lot. He can't figure out what happened. The brainwashing, the lies, Lisbeth's grasp over his trauma. Doing my best to help him recover. Oh. Sure hope they find now. Oh, Jacob and Sarah Lee. Karen is a big help too. She is good with words. That letter from Jacob and Sarah made him happy. Daniel needs more friends, so do I. Sean, we posing. <laughs> Art. It's cute. Total trip to live with Karen again. She wants to move on. That's easy for her to say. I'm trying. Daniel is getting better. I can see he loves having mommy back. Oh. Daniel's power is no secret here. No one gives a shit. They just go along with it and don't see it as something they can use to their own advantage. Refreshing. Grrr. There's some... Who's gonna tell? We're already the batshit crazy sand people. <laughs> David. <laughs> okay. So this place away is what you make it. Joan haunts it with cool-ass sculptures made from scavenged scraps. She's a cool and sunny woman, Karen's closest thing to a best friend, it seems. Cool as heck ornamental tattoos. Take my time today. Arthur and Stanley live in one of the only proper houses in town. They built it together. Ten years ago, from ruins of their past lives, these two can't stop teasing each other, but they're so inspiring. Old couple, young love. Oh, cute. 
Got a letter from Cass today. Feels good. Would love to hang with her again. Someday. Oh, I'm glad she's doing good. This place makes me want to draw. Could stare at these canyons forever. Oh, looks like Daniel's doing his best. Daniel needs to vent out. He's been having nightmares about Haven Point and Lisbeth for weeks. Still feels guilty about my eye. Need to find ways to help him process this. Karen told us about a cool camping spot. Reached the top after a long hike across the canyon. Track sessions feel like forever ago. Need to work on my cardio. Don't fall, mate! <laughs> Ursa Major, Man Horsarius. See, that's how I feel. Man Horsarius. Probably the best view ever. Gonna stargaze all night thanks to Arthur's telescope. Daniel seems happy. Daniel deserves to be happy! I'm glad we had these. Not a fan of desert critters. Yeah, like, those were gonna stop you from the critters, okay. No, but that does stop you from freezing to death, because did you know, if you've never lived My in or near a desert climate... A I'm glad we're sleeping in our bed tonight. Yeah, sleeping on rocks is not fun. If you've never lived on or near a desert climate, it is very hot during the day. We better get out of here before that heat freezing comes freezing at night. So deserts just have a wide range of temperatures. So oftentimes you can see a desert that's like 100 degrees during the day, but at night it's like 20 degrees. Miserable. Miserable. <laughs> I hope we can go watch the stars again. Mom said there's a moon eclipse coming up soon. <laughs> I'm in. This place is cool. I could just move here. Hey! I can help. Just tell me what you want to put in there. You are the man. I want to make sure I get a draw in before we pack up. Ooh, sketching time. Good idea. I'm glad you can still draw after. Daniel, you're yeah. so guilty. <laughs> Me too, Daniel. But if I can see it in my mind, I can still sketch anything. Hmm. Almost. That's so cool. I don't want you to stop drawing. Ever. <laughs> Thanks, man. This is so cool. Hey, can you draw me as a superhero? Like, striking a pose over the canyon. Hmm, I can try. Can we draw it? Oh, I see. We have to observe it. See it in our mind's eye first. <sighs> it's so nice and cool in the morning here. More then like it gets freezing. So hot. Tada. Finished. Let me check it out. Jeez. Do I really look that evil? He looks more like a super villain. He looks like Doctor Strange. Don't be disappointed. You asked for this. So we can have Daniel pack for us. We can we just draw it. Rue? Drin. Pretty useless with the crazy moonlight we had. <laughs> but it scares the coyotes away. Activate flashlight. On the way. God damn. That food was amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Oh, thanks, Joanne. Yep. Still need our processed sugar in this hippie desert. Yo, Captain Can, can you take these away? Sure. Can you take these away? 
perfect formation. Let's clean up this mess. Not if it cleans up by itself. Stop. Daniel. <laughs> Can't catch it, huh? No shit. Oh, brother. Jeez. You're no fun. Typical brother behavior. Okay, so Daniel did everything Daniel can do. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate your help. Let's pack our book. I swear Dad had that same book in the garage. Yeah, I think he did. Why did he never show it to us? Maybe it reminded him of Mom too much. Oh. Yeah, right. It's so ironic in such a sick way that Karen and Esteban clearly loved each other. We better get out of here before that heat and comes And there was in. so much pain in her leaving. And these boys finally get her back in their lives. But Esteban never does. That's... It's so, oh, sad. It felt good to sleep under all those stars. Well, let's hit the trail, cowboy. Okay, it is not that easy to pack a sleeping bag. Let me tell you, you have to compact those things with every ounce of your finger strength. You gotta like fold them. What are you doing? Leave that alone, Daniel. You gotta be nice the to fuck, the creatures dude? Don't around do you. That. What's wrong? Stop messing with it, it's man. It's a creature. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, little guy. Yeah. Don't get eaten by eagles. Do eagles eat scorpions? No idea. <laughs> cool. Let's go. Do no harm, Daniel. Do no harm. Why is it so hard for I children to understand that? Stars. Or any. <laughs> hey. We saw the Milky Way, dude. How cool is that? Yeah, that's true. And Mars. That was so cool, Arthur and Stanley let us use the telescope. Yeah, these guys are real cool. Hey, see this? Looks like the ones you did back in that cabin, when you got sick. Oh, totally. Wait, does that mean other people were here? Of course. Maybe someone from away did it. Oh. I bet it was Joanne. Didn't Joanne will let me help her with the sculpture when we get back? Hell yeah. You're like the magic assistant. It's nice to be able to use my power out here. Not hide it. Yeah. Karen was right. They're all cool with it. Mom doesn't say much about my power. Why do you think? Maybe she just doesn't care. You think? Karen is kind of like that. Like a hippie. She just goes with the flow, man. It's all good. She's weird like us. <laughs> I hear you. Amazing that anything can grow out here. Does it ever rain in the desert? Well, oh, uh, good question. Yes, monsoons. Arizona gets monsoons. So it's very dry most of the year, but then in summer, torrential random rains and winds. <sighs> Damn. And a lot of humidity the in the air. Hope Karen has some food. Hmm. 
My legs are gonna be like yours after all this hiking now. Hey, you know who I'd see having a trailer out here? <laughs> who? Wow, I didn't think to look down. I was just looking out. Oh man, so many wolves in this desert. <laughs> It feels like he's a anyway, kid again. What I was saying is, <laughs> Brody, he'd love it. Like, he could have his own radio station and everything. Yeah, definitely. It would be so cool to have him around. <laughs> I miss him sometimes. Brody was a good friend. You know, I could have done it by myself, right? Hey, let me be the cool, helpful big brother once in a while, okay? Ooh, look, look, oh man, I just saw a cool baby lizard. Yeah, and you scared it. <sighs> I know. Looks like a job for our local super psychic boy. <laughs> But how did they get up here then? So, maybe you can if help us get out of here. If there are rocks in their path, how did they get up here? I'll try. Step back. Be super careful. Um, did you look where those rocks were going, sir? There you go. I hope it's okay. <laughs> nice man. I know Sean is a kid too, but he could try at least to teach Daniel why he needs to be careful and of what he needs to be careful. Especially moving rocks in a rock slide. I mean, sometimes you move one and everything comes tumbling down. But that's just Grandma Bree. Getting all nervous again. Can't be too careful now. <gasps> we made it to the title sequence. Oh, episode five is called Wolves. I love this. Oh, there's one of the sculptures. Hey, I'm gonna go see what Joanne is doing. <laughs> go for it. I have to bring back the telescope to Stanley and Arthur. Went to town for weekly supplies. Some pancakes left in the kitchen? <laughs> back soon. Daniel, you copy? Yes, I read you. 10-4. I have a pancake alert in the kitchen. Repeat, pancake alert. Oh, man. Sorry, I was gonna eat with Joanne. Over and out. 10-4. No flying pancakes today. <laughs> I finally feel like they're having fun again. I don't know why, I just felt like episode 4 was just a bummer from beginning to end. There was no redeeming moment. There was no happy ending for anyone. I mean, sure, Sarah Lee got out, but we didn't get to see or experience it, that at all. Episode four was just such a bummer, totally. But I feel like in this one, they're finally given a little bit of peace. And I know it's, it's not going to continue this way, but we needed this as players. We needed this. Looking at this place. I see that Karen really wanted to get away from it all. <laughs> Literally. Nice mess. 
Tenure will never change. Still can't believe she's kept it. Wow. Oh, this is Karen's place. It's nice to play games with Daniel again. <laughs> Karen likes to join us too. I don't know why. Originally, I thought this RV belonged to the telescope guys because he said, I, I, and I know they live in a house that was given to us already, but the way he kind of like said, he approached and was like, I need to give these guys their telescope back. Hmm. And then like walked Arthur into this and Stanley probably want their door. Telescope yeah, Arthur and Stanley. I thought for sure this was Arthur and Stanley's place, but now I'm like, rewire. This is Karen's place. And that's why he felt comfortable eating the pancakes. <laughs> I was a little confused why he was just gonna eat Arthur and Stanley's pancakes, but it's fine. No matter what happened before. Anyways, um Karen so I guess hook us up here. Karen kept the that this counts. mug that Sean made her. Still can't believe she's kept it. Come on, bug. Karen taught me some cool off the grid shit. Little homemade water filter, okay. Take USB key. Why would we do that? Well, it gave us the option, so I guess we're just gonna take it. I don't know. Okay. She's really good at rewriting her own life. So this is Karen's poems, I'm guessing. I am a solo Mobius strip. Just when I reach the end, I go back to the beginning. Resign myself to new faces, the privilege to escape and rewrite another draft. Goddess laughs at plans, then shows me the page left unmarked for years. Out in the ghost desert, the seeds return as saplings to reveal their age and power. Now I go back forward, layer with feared, layered with fear and hope, to water the children of the sun. I don't know what this means. It's a lot of words. This one's pretty intense. Oftentimes, I feel like poetry Think is I just get it. words. <laughs> Sometimes you, some poems need to be read over and over again for the meaning to become clear, need to be analyzed. And there's an art in that. There's a beauty in that, in the consumption of that. And then some poems sacrifice meaning for beauty of word choice and rhythm. And sometimes you just get to read a poem and just enjoy it for the word choice and the rhythm and the beauty of how things flow. And it doesn't really mean anything or it doesn't mean anything extremely deep. It just depends on what kind of poem you're reading. Don't believe I would find a soul within or without a church. A miracle was sleep and food and fuck. A day without shit, until it was not. Now we run to celestial spires. Oh, visions of the fake prophet engulfed in ego and belief. As the burning cross falls on all your cruel angels, I am the bonfire of vanities. So when the dam breaks, we all flood, like glass on a mirage, if I believe. Whoa. I hope Karen sends this to Claire and Steven. Oh, so I guess this is a draft letter written to the grandparents that was never sent. Hi, Mom and Dad. I've been thinking about this letter for a while, and I know it's been a long, long time coming. So I'm sitting here tonight thinking about the words I should have written 10 years ago. You always used to say, everything happens for a reason. We fought about it then. Scribble, scribble. I understand why now. There is a reason I feel like I have to reach out to you both tonight from the desert. I know you've only heard from me once by phone and six times by letter for almost a decade. I'm sorry. Scribble, scribble. I didn't mean to hurt you, and I was certainly not trying to punish you like you told me. Scribble, scribble. Don't laugh, but I just didn't know what to say or write. Poet's block. 
just like how you had to block me from your life after I left Esteban. I understand that was how you had to deal with a problem child, scribble scribble, an only child who didn't live up to your expectations. There's no denying that I failed you, but the burden, scribble, weight of your aspirations as parents failed me too. You had such a rigid opinion of what I was supposed to be that I didn't have the chance, scribble, opportunity to explore who I actually was. I wanted a daughter to grow up happy, or sorry, you wanted a daughter to grow up happy, find a good job, a great husband, settle down, to breed, scribble, have kids and raise them in faith to continue the cycle of suburbia. That daughter wasn't me, scribble. I know that you were raised in a different time and culture, so I didn't understand your point of view, like you didn't understand your wayward daughter, maybe a bridge too far for us at the time. After Danny was born, you knew I wanted to take a break, scribble, some time to figure things out in my head and heart. Oh, she calls him Danny. That's sweet. No one else calls him that, right? It didn't make sense to your scribble, you or dad, and I get that, but you didn't see how scribble. I was so desperate and only Esteban was willing to give me that time because he saw how unhappy I was. I don't blame you for my decision to leave and maybe a timeout would have led to the same outcome. We will never know and I try not to live in regret. My life has been a roller coaster and there have been times I long to hear your voices and thoughts, even the negative ones, scribble. And I know when I last talked to you in New York to ask for help in paying back my debts, you wanted to help, but it was on your condition to return right back to where I couldn't return. I hate that was our last conversation. I am sorry I reached out to you this day. I am sorry I broke your hearts. I am sorry I let you broke mine for silencing my, me for so long. I think we've paid our dues. And now I sit under a blue field of crystal stars like the poet I hope I am, writing and waiting for a chance to rebuild an old bridge with my mother and father. I hope we can cross it one more time. Love, scribble, your daughter. Interesting. Yeah. It, it's a good letter. It's a good letter and I think one of the important things about this letter, if you're ever wondering how to write a letter to someone who you've burned a bridge with but want to repair, is that she edits herself. You know, there are things that she's saying here like, I just didn't have the chance. And she crossed that out and wrote opportunity because some words are just so loaded with feeling that immediately when people read them, they get defensive. Like, oh, you're just trying to defend your point of view. So even just changing a word like, I didn't have the chance to, I didn't have the opportunity to explore who I really was. That does make a very big difference when someone reads that letter. So the difference between to breed versus have kids. Those are, those are words with two very different meanings, connotations, and can be taken different ways. And so the fact that she's edited this so much to write something that is actually an attempt at a bridge, and she's aware of the things that she's said in the past that didn't work, I love this, I love seeing this. Either Karen was desperate for a job, or she loved working with kids. Happy World Florida Resort. Yeah, I'm gonna guess she was desperate. This is Karen's bed. This is where she sleeps, I guess. Karen has been camping in her own house since we arrived. Oh, did she give the boys the bed? Oh, Karen. That's nice. Finally being a mom. Karen must have been so excited to finally hit New York. Fly by night, not by fright, into the big city bright, stop. That cliche never dying in the steel of the buildings, the warp of the street. But no matter what or where I spin, the pole of a million dead poets takes me to dance once again. Go. But this time I get to lead, until the next flight. That 
one makes a little bit more sense. And it's pretty. Karen doesn't even like to leave this place just to go shopping. So she leaves this place once a week, looks like. Karen looks so young and fragile on this picture. Hmm. Hard times. Maggie and Karen, Summer 11, Kissimmee, Florida. What a town name, Kissimmee. Looks like they all finally found their home. Oh, why does this look like... No. It kind of looks like Leo. Why? Um, anyway, so there's Karen. And we assume this is either Maggie or Joanne. No. Daniel's Big Ten late birthday party made him feel so happy. Oh. Oh, that's right. He's 10 now. He had a birthday. They grow up so fast. I do remember Karen would drown her pancakes in hot sauce. Ugh. Gross. That is pretty gross, to be honest. I'm so glad Jacob and his sister are doing okay. They deserve some peace. Hola, Sean. Sorry I did not write to you sooner, but this was the first time I've had a chance to relax after we got out of Haven Point thanks to you and your brother. I still can't believe it really happened. So bizarre. Sarah Lee and I do miss our parents, but we're not ready to let them know where we are yet. We will figure it out later. Thanks to my old savings account, I finally got Sarah Lee antibiotics, so she's been feeling pretty... She's been feeling better pretty fast. Kids are like superhumans. The most important thing to me is my sister, just like your brother. You are lucky to have each other, and when you both came our way, we were blessed. I'm trying to track down our Humboldt crew, so I'll keep you posted. I hope everybody is okay after that night on the farm. We all deserve a break and a better future. Please let me know when you make it to the other side. You and Daniel got this. Give our little hero a big hug. Take care, Jake. That's nice. <laughs> so cute. Oh, Sarah Lee wrote to Daniel. <laughs> Looks like Lila has some competition now. Hi, Daniel. Hope you are good and happy. I feel so much better now. It took forever before we found a place to live, but we finally did. I love this cold weather way more than the heat. Please come see us soon. Thanks for being one of my best friends, Sarah Lee. Oh, we'll be a good boy and tidy up the clothes. Why not? Why not? And what did we get to see? She was that close. Sucks she had to pay all that money back. Dear Ms. Reynolds, pursuant to our conversation on June 10th and your inability to submit your poetry manuscript the other way to Ravensbury Press by the contracted deadline of June 1st, despite re repeated e efforts to accommodate you, we regret to inform you that this breach of contract means we shall no longer be publishing the collection as part of our new poet series. As stated in section 6 of our contract, see attached copy, if the author fails to deliver the manuscript by the agreed date, the publisher has the right to recover the full amount of the $10,000 advance. We have included with this letter a repayment form and schedule. As stated in section, I'm not going to read those Roman numerals, XXII of our contract, what is that, 23? See attached copy. The rights for your manuscript shall revert back to the author upon full repayment of the advance. If you have further questions, please refer them to our legal team. We wish you the best of luck with your future endeavors. Sincerely, Alistair Moon. What a name, Alistair Moon. So basically what this means is that they contracted her for a poetry manuscript for the new poet series. They gave her an advance of $10,000 to start working. She didn't deliver when she was supposed to and she had to pay back the $10,000, probably with interest. What I am still working through is the rights for your manuscript shall revert back to the author upon full repayment of the advance. So even though they don't have the manuscript, they maintain the rights for the manuscript. So she's not legally allowed to publish it without them, to publish it without someone else, until she pays them back the $10,000, probably with interest. So 
she probably, because she couldn't get the money from her parents, even though she tried, because her parents said, if you come back and live with us and live your happy life, we'll then pay you for your debts, we'll help you pay your debts off. So she probably didn't pay the money. And then the rights for the manuscript probably belong to this company still because she never paid it back. Huh. Is that the same person who rode her back in Beaver Creek? Hi, Rumi. Yes, I know NY in August is hot as balls. You did say you like the heat, but my apartment under the roof can be really suffocating. Don't want to rub it in, but Aspen is my new summer home. Daily temp around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and hot tub at night. Anthony's cabin is more like a ski lodge. Next trip, maybe you can tag along. Poets retreat. Best cure for your writer's block. And please let me know when you can pay me back for August's rent. I definitely need it for next month and up here in Aspen. I'll see you on September 5th instead of the 4th. So put your clothes on. Stay out of trouble and remember to water my babies this time. Okay, so... Uh, given the date... June 21st and then August 4th. I'm guessing that Karen went to New York to try and make it as a poet. And because of combination of this manuscript thing and maybe not being able to hold down a job, she couldn't publish her poetry and she couldn't pay rent. And then probably at that point she was like, the dream is dead. I'm a failure. Can't do it. I'm going to try Arizona. Okay. We've done all of that. I do want to eat some pancakes. Yeah, I do want to eat some pancakes. So let's do that. One thing Claire and Karen have in common. <laughs> their love for pancakes. And we're just going to eat it with our hands like an animal, I guess. Been a wolf child for far too long, it seems. Oh, there's Daniel's dirty sweater. Man, I'm still not used to this heat out here. Okay. Had no clue there was a network of seed pirates. Karen's a real life hacker. Pirate seeds, native seed savers in the southwest. Beans, amaranth, squash, corn. Okay. Karen takes on some small piece works for a living. Hi, Karen. Must pay better than poetry. Hi, Karen. Thanks for your last advice column. We got quite a response and a lot of hits. I know you don't want a social media footprint, but you could generate a lot of clicks with your insights. Looking forward to your next piece. Please make sure to send your invoice for May and June. May and June? Girl! Karen is not a doer. She really is a free spirit. She didn't even get paid for May. Karen! Claim your money! Oh boy. Brody's so good at describing painful situations. Oh, we're checking up on Brody. I'm the good into it. You can go home again, a tribe called West. The last time I saw my mother before this year, I was telling her to leave me the fuck alone, that I was done with the whole bullshit family. My real fam were the strangers I met on the road who became friends, not my family who became strangers. I adopted all the online connections I made around the world and all those wandering souls that I would encounter on my journeys ahead. You would be reading about them right now, except... The next time I saw my mother, she was in hospice care at our Utah home, her body light and frail as a web, holding my hand and telling me that she was sorry about everything that kept us apart for most of my adult life. My mom was dying of cancer, and she was sorry. So I cried. She cried. My brother cried. We all cried. And all the years of family bullshit blew away to dust. Like that. I just wasn't mad anymore. I didn't know it would be so easy or so hard. It didn't mean the past didn't happen or that I wasn't responsible in my own way. My brother used to tell me that I was a quote, fake liberal because while I was out trying to save the world, he had to take care of mom and the family estate. 
Maybe he was right. But I told him that he also had the money to take care of them. God damn, if I was in charge of the finances, I would have given away the family estate and we'd be broke living in a co-op. My brother knows this. Families are just fucking weird. Society tells us to love your parents and siblings simply out of blood and chance. But what if you hate each other? What if you're only linked by random DNA? What if? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I've seen the best and worst of people everywhere I roll. You tend to have those extremes at 3 a.m. at an empty gas station or on some desolate freeway. Yes, I've seen strong families bond in hard times. I know there are big siblings out there who will always care for their little siblings and vice versa. They helped me to understand our fragile filial ecosystem. In her last hours, my brother and I held my mom's thin fingers as she passed on to a place, I hope, is better than the one she came from. After she was gone, I found a stash of some old school essays and stories, the only thing I was good at in school. I never knew she kept this stuff or that she cared. Even if we never understood each other, she must have been a little proud that I went my own way and tried to be a force for good. Mothers know how to make you cry like a little bitch. The first time tears had burned my eyes in a long time. It felt good. So now, I've come back to a home I once vowed to never return. I don't feel so alienated this time, even if I still am. Like I say too often, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Now I have an estate to deal with and more responsibility than I actually want. But I have to see this as karma, or destiny, or the dharma of the privileged. Don't panic, but I may be taking a break from my life on wheels just to see who or what I can help. Now I have more resources to spread around. I'm sure my brother will approve, insert sarcasm, but if we're still talking after all this memorial bonding. Okay, it's not a happy ending, but maybe it's a hopeful one. And speaking of hope, given the sad state of this sad nation, I've been thinking it's time to move outside my comfort zone. Send dispatches from people and places I'm not so familiar with. Places I can explore to tell new stories from, like Canada or Mexico, or the road never ends. Yeah, I ghosted her. But so glad to see Lila's back. So... This essay from Brody, who is one of the kindest people that we've met on our journey as Sean and Daniel who helped us out the most, who gave us what, we, what he had to give. He writes this essay about family and what family means to him. Having left his family by choice and disavowed them and decided that his family by blood was not his family, but his chosen family was his family. And then he goes home and he loses that distinction because he realizes that all of the arguments and all of the hard stuff doesn't actually matter. He probably should have given less of an F if we're going to bring the conversation back to the subtle art of not giving an F, uh, the book I just finished reading. And it's interesting because uh, there are some there are some similar themes, not so much about family, but about at the end of your days, or at the end of days for someone that you really love. Why is it that only then do our priorities magically rearrange themselves? Why is it that only then do we realize what would have mattered? in life, what should have mattered in life. Why does it take death to realize that for so many of us? I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. And this game has a lot of those themes, a lot of those themes of conflict in family. You know, you have this, this woman of Karen who left them, abandoned them, ghosted them, 
with not a word and the pain that that must have caused the family. But she's not a bad woman. She's not a bad person. She just made a bad choice, a choice that hurt someone. And then, even though there were so many moments that they needed her in their lives before this one, she was there for one of them, finally. And, and how interesting it is that all the other stuff just fades away. Not forgotten, not lost forever, but it just sort of fades because she's, she was there for this moment when they did need her. Isn't that interesting? I, it, this, this game has notions of family that just don't... It, it's not explored in a lot of other mediums, in a lot of other games. It's a very complex version and laying out of what family means. It can mean so many different things. And it can mean two things at once. It can mean I don't care about my family and at the same time, everything I do is to please them. This game, man, it's, it's fleshed out these concepts in a very, very beautiful way. So this I'm almost not ready for because I haven't, I've been waiting to see Lila again in this story. So we have Lila Park uploaded a new profile picture with some friends saying free the families. Then she said, I hope nobody is mad. I've been out of touch. Brain needed a timeout. Yes, it can happen to me too. People are such pussies about mental health. Just talk and take care of each other. FFS. And I guess earlier she posted, thanks for the flowers. I cried, assholes. Lila is back. And the commenters say, hold up, I'm swinging by, waiting for you. Uh, hello, fam, I got you, be ready. So it sort of seems like Lila had a really hard time with what happened to Sean and Daniel and Esteban and then just not hearing from them ever again. <laughs> because remember, in our playthrough, we did not call her. So it seems like exactly what we were worried about because she has had to go to an institution for mental health before that had, had been said in the playthrough earlier. Be we were worried that in not calling her, that would make her spiral. And as it turns out, it did. But as it also turns out, she got the help that she needed and she's back. Her friends cared for her. Her support group came through for her, sent her flowers. And that's how it stinking should be. That's how it should be. It's not wrong to have mental health issues. It doesn't make you broken. It makes you normal. It makes you human. But when someone needs help, they should get it. And it should work. <laughs> and it should be that simple. But how Dang stupid is it that it's not like that at all. <sighs> and yes, this funny meme. Me during the day. All good, under control. Me at 3 a.m. in my bed. Ah! It's pretty relatable, Lila. Pretty relatable. And that right there is where today's episode is going to end. Thank you so much for watching. This game, it just, whew, it gets me. I just want these boys to be happy, you know what I mean? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment, talk to me, tell me how you're doing. Let me know what your favorite part was. Please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too. And of course, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Strange Rebel Gaming so you don't miss the next video. That's all. I love you all. Bye!